Bacon for sure. Hello, thank <laughs> you for tuning in. Welcome to our PKU Test Kitchen. I'm Charles Spaulding. I'm part of the team at Biomarin Pharmaceutical that works on educational tools for healthcare professionals and for people living with PKU. This is our third in a series of ongoing live Facebook Live events. I guess live Facebook Live is sort of a redundancy, isn't it? <laughs> We're happy you could be with us. We're joined today by a few special guests. We have Lisa. Hi. Lisa is also from Biomarin. She is an experienced dietitian. She has been working with PKU patients for a number of years now. And our guest of the hour is Chef Jeff. Chef Jeff has uh, more than a decade of experience working with PKU patients and uh, cooking up delicious meals. We're in for a special treat today. We have not one, but two different low-fee PKU-friendly meals. And uh, just a reminder to those who are joining us live, please type in your questions. We would love to answer those throughout the broadcast. And just want to remind you that we will not be able to answer any uh, personal medical questions. But aside from that, I am very excited to learn some new things in the kitchen today, and I will turn it over to you for some magic in the kitchen. Yeah, right. I'm excited Good luck. Too. I hope you can keep up today. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. Thank you. So as Charles said, I've been traveling for about 10 years all over the country, and I brought you two really great low-protein recipes today, and Lisa's going to help me along the way here. So let's jump right in. Today, the first thing we're going to work on is the fake and bacon recipe. And that actually involves um, using a sweet potato, and it's going to turn out looking and tasting like bacon, believe it or not. So here we go. Well, it's pretty amazing. So in the ingredient list of the, of the fake and bacon, we have a few ingredients we want to go over first. First is, of course, the sweet potato. So sweet potatoes come in all different sizes, but we've kind of showed you a couple different examples here. And we're looking for one about 12 ounces, I think, is what we're thinking. Right, so um, it, the gold standard for all PKU recipes is to make sure that you have the actual ounce weight or gram weight. So for recipes that call for large, that's very relative. So um, what a large potato in this recipe looks like is it should weigh 12 ounces. Okay, great. So along with that, the other ingredients that we're going to be using today, we've got maple syrup, we've got olive oil over here, We've got some spices, and of course, spice is your friend in all PKU cooking because it's going to really help flavor up all those vegetables. But we're going to be using some cumin. We're going to be using um, a little bit of cayenne. This is uh, but it looks hot. Pretty pretty hot. So be <laughs> careful with that. Exactly. If you want it really spicy, you can add a little bit more. But definitely, um, just about a dash is really all we need of the cayenne. Then another key ingredient, and this is really important, is the liquid smoke. So the liquid smoke is something you're going to find in the grocery store. Yeah, I've never heard of liquid yep. smoke. So can you tell us more about sure. where to find it? So in the, it should be available. Every grocery store will have it, and it's going to be found in the section of the grocery store where you would have the Worcestershire sauce and ketchup, mustards, sort of that area, okay. condiments, I'd call it. And what does it do for this recipe? For, this is really the key element to making it kind of taste like meat and have that smoky flavor. Oh, okay. So, Really important, and this is something you want to have in your pantry at home. The next ingredient is the teriyaki sauce, and this is your replacement for soy. So it has a little soy in it, but it's been watered down to reduce the protein value. Yeah, so I think that's a good thing to remember is that soy sauce is going to be um, higher in protein and higher in phenylalanine. So want to make sure you're using teriyaki sauce. Yep. Um, and all teriyaki so sauces are going to vary a little bit in the protein content. So definitely want to make sure you're reading your labels. And this specific label is less than one gram of, or, sorry, one gram of protein. So Absolutely. that's what you want to be looking for. Absolutely. All right, so digging right into the recipe. So those are our ingredients here. And we're going to basically, what we want to do is marinate the slices of sweet potato in that mixture. So to slice the sweet potato, you could use a peeler like this, or more, probably better, would be to use what's called a mandolin slicer. That's something like this. And what that does is it gives you, a, and it's very, very sharp, so be careful. This is probably not for kids. but This is the more it, dangerous one. Right, you slice it down, and you want to keep your fingers protected. But it's going to give you a nice, even, thick slice. And so it'll be like a thick bacon slice is what we're kind of going for. And once you get those sliced up... What would happen if you used the vegetable peeler? What would that one look like? The vegetable like? peeler, yeah, there you go. I got one ready yeah. here. This is just a thinner, so this would be really crispy if you, if you did it with this. 
Um, I like the thicker one. I think it gives you more options. Plus, remember, this is not just a breakfast treat. You could chop this up and use it on salads or maybe like a sandwich topping or something like that. That's great. Versatile okay. is great. Yeah. Um, so, um, besides, so sweet potatoes are main ingredients. Yep. Um, is there other ingredients besides the sweet potato that you could substitute out? Sure. Now, uh, basically any root vegetable would work. So they're going to have a little different flavor, but going back to you, you would want to make sure you readjust your fee and protein based on what other root vegetable you wanted to use. But parsnips would be one. Um, a regular potato you could use. Great. You could use a carrot, so that would be another option. So that's good to know that you can use, you can substitute out for the sweet potato, but always remember that this specific recipe was calculated using a sweet potato. So if you do switch out any of those main ingredients, you're gonna wanna reanalyze it for the amount of protein and be in it. Perfect. All right, so in this bowl, we've got the maple syrup, the olive oil, I mean the, the cumin and the cayenne, the liquid smoke, the teriyaki, the olive oil actually goes into the pan to, uh, to uh, saute it, but all those slices get soaked into the marinade. So okay. they just kind of want to get covered with the sauce, oh, yeah. and then they're going to marinate very quickly. So maybe one to two minutes in the bowl is all it really needs to suck in all that flavor. Oh, perfect. And it's really easy. Yeah, and once it's done, you would heat up a skillet with your olive oil, and we would, sa and we would uh, saute these until they're crisp, about maybe two minutes on each side. And they're going to come out and they're going to look like this. So this is the, the finished product that comes in the pan and it looks like that. You can see it's nice and brown and crispy and crunchy like that. And Chef Jeff, it looks delicious. Ready to go. Yeah. Very, I, very can good. I try some? Sure, let's try it. So we'll take a little piece. We'll just cut a little one like this. And then right, there you perfect. go. Perfect. Thank shot. you. What do you think? It's really good. Smoky. Yeah, it definitely tastes smoky, good. crispy. That's exactly delicious. how it should be. So I definitely could see that um, as as breakfast, but I could definitely see that as being put on a sandwich. So is there any other way to get that bacony, smoky flavor besides um, using the liquid smoke? Not really. Liquid smoke is a unique ingredient that really is important to that recipe. So there isn't really a replacement to, for liquid smoke. What about using actual baking grease? So yeah, that would be an idea. You could, uh, if you're going to use real bacon and you want to add it to the flavor enhancement, what you'd want to do is uh, drain the bacon fat through cheesecloth and whatever comes out on the rendering underneath that would be added to add more bacon flavor to the dish. Yeah, great. So just to reiterate, it's the cheesecloth is the most important thing in there because yep. that's what's going to make sure you're removing all the extra protein. Bacon bits and other... Yep things yep. that could cause the protein level to go Yeah, up. so it's really only the fat flavor you're getting. And then once this is cooked up, then you could lay it, lay it on a sheet pan and this could go in the oven and stay warm for as long as you want it to be. So this whole prep and cook time, about how much time would that someone need to allot for that? That was a pretty quick recipe to make because really <laughs> the, the marination time is very short and the cooking time is very short. So we're looking at about a 15 minute recipe right yeah, here. Yeah, that's totally manageable, really, really 15 easy. minutes. Okay, so that's that. All right, perfect. First recipe done. We got one done. down. Um, oh, so um, one other, so 15 minutes total, and you said put it on a parchment paper. Yep. How long will the bacon last? So it really is designed to be eaten while it's hot and fresh from the oven. If you were to, say, uh, want to save it for an, maybe a day, you could refrigerate it and reheat it in the microwave, but uh, it'll lose some of the crunchiness. So really it is kind of a make now dish. Okay, so kind of the same as bacon. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. All right, so that's that one. Let's move on to our next recipe because we got oh, Real fast, I just want to mention oh, um, some of the serving size information yep. um, and nutrient content since sure. those are um, common questions that come. So this whole recipe um, will create um, eight or two cups total. Um, one serving is about six slices. Um, the gold standard for PKU recipes is always going to be a gram amount, so um, the gram amount per slice in here is about 15 grams, which is going to be less than one gram of protein, at about 0.73 grams of protein, and 40 milligrams of fee. So you see very, very low in protein and um, phenylalanine. Yep. And a six slice serving is a pretty generous serving yep. too. So yep, definitely. Very, very nice. Definitely adequate enough for, yeah. for really a good. sandwich or for breakfast. Okay, excellent. All right, now we can right, move on. So now we're going to make our ham uh, hamburger, which is basically ground beef made from cauliflower. And that's going to be the component 
that we make the meatloaf with. So we have to do one step ahead of that. And All right, I'm going to cool. move this the out of our way. The cauliflower, making the cauliflower ahead of time, is it can be used also for other recipes that would call for a ground beef component to them. So this is not just for meatloaf. This would be for anything that had a beefy kind of flavor ne needed. Do you want to know so funny about the cauliflower? It looks just like the brain. Well, that's kind of cool that you said that because I've heard that before, and uh, it's also <laughs> considered kind of a superfood, and the fact that it looks like the brain. It's maybe, even, uh, even more important because we're making low-fee foods exactly. that are good to protect the brain yep. as well. Absolutely. All right, so on this recipe, we've got the tray here, and we've got some things that we need to add again. Here, do you want me to help? Yeah, that looks a little top heavy All there. All right, so first thing, in this recipe, we're going to go through the ingredients again. We've got our spices. We've got cumin. You can hold that up for me. Yeah. Cumin. Oh, this is our coriander. Coriander. It's our coriander. We've got cumin. We've got onion powder. And we've got garlic powder. We've got these all over here. We've got some chili powder. All that gets mixed in, and that's your dry. Now that looks hot. <laughs> that's your dry. And, and by the way, chili powder does have a little kick to it, too. So again, be careful with that one. But those are your dry ingredients that get mixed together. OK. And there's also a wet mm -hmm. ingredient, and that would be the barbecue sauce. We get these Again, keeping, a track, keeping track of the labels and making sure you check it, because we're looking for zero protein, and this is one that works, so that's a zero protein product. Yeah, it's always going to remind you, all labels are, or all brands are going to be a little bit different, but just read your label and make sure it's a barbecue sauce that has no protein in yep, it. And yep, absolutely. And so what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of jump into this. We've got the oven would be preheated to 400 degrees already. And we would want to chop down this cauliflower. This is a pretty hard, large head, so I'm going to just take half of it because I just want to show you how easily this cuts. So Chef Jeff, we have a question in. Sure. Um, can you substitute a different ingredient for the cauliflower? Sure, like maybe, like maybe like broccoli? Sure. Now, if you did broccoli and you want to use broccoli for this, it's obviously going to be more a greener flavor to that. But it will um, also. Here, let me take it. Will it will also uh, taste a little bit different because cauliflower in itself is like a sponge, and it'll take on whatever flavor you you add to it. Where where broccoli probably won't. Okay. It'll be a stronger, more green flavor. I guess is what I'm. Getting that. So that's, to that. Yeah, that's a good um, nutrient, or from like the taste perspective, from a nutrient analysis, again, just like I mentioned before, if you substitute out broccoli for cauliflower, the amount of protein and fee is going to change in the recipe. So just always double checking and reanalyzing your recipe if you change any of the major ingredients that have protein yep. in them. So all we're trying to do is get this to a loose kind of chop like that, kind of coarse, so it resembles uh, ground beef. And we'll put that in that bowl. And oh, the, oh, I, the bowl I'm, that I moved? Nope, I got it right here. Okay. I've got a bowl here. I'm failing as a so sous chef So this here. gets coated with coconut oil in the recipe. Now, I'm going to use vegetable oil. Coconut oil is a little bit harder to find, and sometimes yeah. it's, it's in a solid form like margarine. Yeah, so and it needs to be melted, uh, which is what they call for in the recipe. But it's just as easy just to use vegetable okay. oil. Well, that's good to know. But then always to remember, if you do use coconut oil, to or reminders to yep. you need to melt it down so and if not we use just it. Just open that up and just yeah. pour a little bit on there. We want about just enough to get it to That's coat it. Very trusting. Okay, and I would say if you're measuring, it says a tablespoon. So a tablespoon right there. Let's there you just go. do it correctly. Perfect. And that's just to kind of coat and glaze over the cauliflower. And then we're going to add our other wet ingredients which is the, uh, the barbecue sauce. All right, and you so need that to again. So this, we're going to put three tablespoons All in. All right. Do that. Thank you. And after that ingre ingredient's added in, Look we're going to add go. the dry ingredients. Am I doing a good job of You're estimating? You're so good. <laughs> so it's like you've done this before. I, I have it. It's I all lies. It. <laughs> all right, so we've got that incorporated. And now we need our dry ingredients. And that's that little bowl of spices. All and right. Don't forget, we need the coconut flour called for in the recipe, and we're using a mix quick or baking mix. This is a medical baking mix that we're using from um, a medical company that makes a low, very low protein mix. But if you didn't have this and you look at the ingredients, 
in your pantry you'd want to be stocking with wheat starch would be another replacement you could use. Oh, that's great. So um, if you didn't have this specific specific medical brand, you could get uh, you could yeah, use store bought wheat starch. Store bought wheat starch, job. great. And yep. do any tips for finding them or cooking with them? Do they cook a little bit different they than do, uh, flour? You know, with this application, it doesn't really matter because in okay. baking it would be more specific. But in this application, just having any kind of low pro baking mix would work. That's good. Because we're only know. putting in about a quarter cup, and that's just to kind of uh, thicken it up and make it bind it, yeah, bind it as okay. a binder. Okay. okay. So then the dry ingredients go in, and we want to coat these all really nicely so they're all mixed together. And then we're going to uh, have you. Oh, do I get a stir do now? This really do I do fun the. Thing. And this is kind of a. No, the, not yet. Oh, this yeah, is no. the, the ground beef part portion. So. Oh. We're going to now so chef leave chef, this on a pan. We actually have a question that came in sure, from um, a viewer, Lindsay E. Um, can I use jackfruit instead of cauliflower? Ooh, yeah. Oh, ooh, look at that, um, yeah. I love jackfruit. Um, someday in another podcast, maybe we'll do some jackfruit recipes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, definitely. That is a really cool thing because jackfruit kind of resembles pork and when it sh it'll shred, so it'll be, it would be a good option as well. So it, it will it, it change the flavor at all sweeter and the texture so it'll, it'll make it sweeter, sweeter than the cauliflower yep. and then again just the reminder that it'll change the nutrient information as correct. well correct and jackfruit is a fruit yep so it does have a sweeter flavor okay. to it than the vegetable yeah. within the cauliflower okay so th once this is done we're going to pour this out into a pan all right and this is going to go into that oven perfect the match 400 degrees preheated you want to spread it out so yeah. that it's nice and thin and just and a reminder, um, th all the questions that are coming in have been great questions, but keep asking us questions, please. Yeah, please. Okay. This goes in the oven for about 50 minutes, okay? Then it comes out, and it's going to look like this. It's the magic oven. The magic of the oven. Okay, so now this might scare a few people because it looks like it's burnt, but that's kind of what I want. I want it to be crunchy and crispy because we want that burnt kind of charcoal flavor to add to the meat flavor okay. of it. So, so it's, kind of it's okay that, of that it looks like that? Yeah, oh okay. yeah, this is exactly what I want. It's not going to change the flavor at all? Nope, because all right. now we're going to make the meatloaf. Perfect. Okay, so this becomes the ground beef. And in the meatloaf recipe, let me take this one away. Yeah, let's get this Flip one. With this one. Switch our... There you go. Beautiful. So now in the meatloaf recipe, we would have... Um, do you want me to move this too? We're gonna put that in a bowl in one second. Okay. If you can grab me a bowl. Oh yeah. Do you want the same bowl? Yeah. All right. Into this bowl, we're gonna add that ground beef, and you can put that in there okay. if you like. Of course. And we're gonna also add green onion, some garlic, some green bell pepper, mint, and carrot. So I want to show you a couple tricks right, right away, as long as we can. We've got the time. Ooh, let me Let's move this one. Do this quickly. I'll show you how to do a green pepper, and then I'm going to show you how to top, uh, cut an onion. All right, pepper first. So the chopped pepper is real, real easy. It's a matter of chopping the top and the bottom off, slicing it down the side, and then opening it up. Huh, and look, look at that, that. just like yeah. a kind of like a so easy <laughs> envelope. It opens right up, <laughs> and then you can peel out the what's called the ribbing right. with your hands. And then you've got now a tough side way. skin down and the soft side, side skin up. That's how we want it. And then we're going to cut this into strips. And from the strip point, it can be then stacked up. Yep. And we've got our chopped red pepper. Nice. Remember, keep your fingers and your thumbs, uh, your, your knuckles as your guide to the knife here. Keep your fingers rolled in. You never want to have your fingers out. And you're going to just use that knife against your knuckles as a guide. You make it look so easy. It's pretty easy, but it just takes that little <laughs> trick to know that, and then you have safety there at home as well. So that's that. All right. Then we've got the green onion that goes in there. If you didn't want to use green onion, we could use real onion. And let's do another little quick trip, trick on that one. Perfect. Grab me so an onion there. Take that out of the way. Oh, yeah. And the onion looks like this. And here we go. Ready? No oh, yeah. tears? No tears. I'm 30, ready. 30 seconds. I here we go. Up. Chop the top and the bottom off. We need flat sides so they don't roll. That's so it keeps it sturdy. Then we want to take an outside layer off again. So I just cut it down and peel off the outside 
probably one or two layers of, of the peel skin on the outside. Okay, so not just the skin, you want to get... Yeah, I want to get down so that it's tender layers. and that tougher outside is off. Okay. okay? Then we're going to take the onion and we're going to do what I call tic-tac-toe method. <laughs> tic-tac-toe. Exactly. <laughs> so and that's it's exactly a great it game. <laughs> and the kids will love it. Yeah. So here you go. We're going to cut down, not all the way, we want to go about two-thirds of the way so that it doesn't fall apart. And we're going to do those slices just the same direction that okay. way. Oh, so you just turned it a little I bit? I just did it to the other side, but it's all okay. going this direction right now. Perfect. So and now I'm going to turn it halfway. Okay. And I'm going to do that same cut just down like that. Okay. And like that. I'm just turning it to get the other side. And now it goes on its side. And as you chop down, look what happens. Oh, magic. You've got chopped onion. Chopped onions. So the onion, because it's sort and of no like tears. a flower, and no, no tears. tears, comes out chopped like that. Hmm. Pretty cool, hey? That is really cool. Love it. All right, so now we're going to put together the meatloaf. The meatloaf, meatloaf. All right, is a combination put that out of the way. Of, yep, that's good. Okay. Take that away. It's a combination of our ground beef with our sautéed green pepper, onion, and carrots. Carrot, again, just chopped up coarsely like this. This was the raw material before it was cooked. And the um, before and the after. Yeah, exactly. Here you go. Before and after. So this goes into the mix. And then we're gonna want to add our milk, which is coconut milk. Coconut milk. Sure yeah, show that. definitely. Coconut uh, products are very, very good for the low-protein diet. You want to look for uh, so delicious brand is a really good brand for coconut milk product because mm -hmm. they have yogurts and other things, ice okay. creams and whatnot. And definitely, again, um, you always want to double check your labels because every brand may vary a little bit and make sure that the protein listed is less than one gram of protein. Yep, absolutely. Um, so um, uh, another user comment uh, in is, um, is coconut water the same as coconut milk? No. Do you want to answer that one? And no. <laughs> no and no. No and you no. <laughs> no, you don't want to answer it? No, uh, no I do want to answer it. <laughs> no, you can't use <laughs> coconut water. <laughs> coconut water, great to drink, lots of electrolytes, but not so much for this recipe. I need right. the milk component in this one. Right, so this uh, is really the creamy. Creamier flavor, yeah, exactly. And then um, that gets added to, and it's actually an important part of mixing in with the egg replacer powder. Good. So another thing that um, is great in low protein cooking is egg replacer. So um, always want to note that this is not egg substitute. It is completely different than than egg substitute. So it's actually going to be replace that to uh, replace eggs in a recipe to lower the protein content. Right. So looking at your label again, making sure that there's no protein in there. Sure. And then just any, do you have any tips on finding egg replacer or using egg replacer yeah. in recipes? The egg replacer is going to be found where your other flours and Baking, the baking aisle of the grocery store. So that's where you're going to find it. Remember, egg replacer powder is used in more savory dishes like this. Okay. If you wanted to replace uh, egg in like a baking pie or cake or something like that, you would um, you use applesauce okay. or coconut milk yogurt or something like that. But okay, for something these, with like more For the savory sweet. dishes, the powder is key to have in your pantry. Okay, perfect. Okay. So that goes in like this. These are your dry ingredients and the spices that we had there. And it's going to get mixed together. We're going to put a half a cup yep. of, I mean, I'm sorry, one cup of the milk. One cup to, uh, right uh, there's, where's my? In Ooh, there. One cup. And we'll pour that in there. And then we're going to also add to this, we're going to add um, some breadcrumbs and you some say ketchup. One, you said one cup, one right? Cup, yep. All right. There you go. Pour that in. And then we want to add about, let's say, a cup of low protein breadcrumbs. The low protein breadcrumbs we got here are from the bread over here that we made and we pulsed it in a food processor. So this is your low protein medical bread, yeah, so good. white bread. You can save this in a Ziploc container and use it up to two weeks. Okay, and it'll be even know. better as it gets drier because these are very fresh right now. And so now. this is not regular bread. It's the special low protein. Low protein bread. Um, perfect. And you said they're good for two weeks? Yep, in an airtight right. container. All right. And if you didn't have medical bread at home, tapioca bread or one of the low, lowest protein breads that you can find in the, in the market 
Yeah. Would be best. Gluten free bread works sometimes too. So a question coming um, in again from our audience is uh, back to the coconut milk. Mm -hmm. it's, this is a popular topic topic, yes. topic today from um, Deirdre K. Is uh, can she use unsweetened coconut yes. milk or o only original? Unsweetened would work as well. I don't think it would change much in this flavor of this okay. because there's going to be some sweetness from the ketchup and okay. everything else. And uh, if you if you are aware of the sugar in your diet and you want to reduce it, definitely go with unsweetened. Okay. So it doesn't change the flavor at nope. all? Okay. So here comes the fun part, because now we're not going to be able to stir this with a spoon. We're actually going to, oh, and I need a little bit of um, ketchup in here right. as well. So do you want, how much ketchup do you, do you want your measuring? We're going to a quarter cup of ketchup, oh, that's and I got one okay. right here. Perfect. And we're going to do this, and now you're going to get your hands dirty. I'm going to get my hands gonna, dirty. This is great to do with the kids at home. So the kids please at home. bring them into the kitchen. I, and know. I get to be involved Especially in the kid activity? The kids love it, so okay. here you go. I won't you take, wanna squeeze I won't that take offense to that. <laughs> with your hands and just get that whole oh. mess kind of pushed oh, together. Man. Just squish it in there, really <laughs> like Play-Doh, and really go at it. It's, it feels like Play-Doh. And it's really fun because the kids feel like they're part of the recipe and they love the, the taste at the end of something that they've made themselves. So is we're kind of getting it together in a loose form. It looks a little wet, so at this point I probably would have just added maybe a small portion more of breadcrumbs to give it a little bit drier okay. consistency. And you can play with that at home, adjust it based on how it looks. But ultimately, we would just take a loaf pan, and that's a standard bread pan like this. And then once that's all mixed together, mm -hmm. you just put it right into the pan. All right, is it all mixed together? Yep, that looks all great. Right. Put it in the pan. With my hands? Yep, you know, right. pour it in with a spoon, whatever you, you want to do Ooh, that. I've already got my hands dirty. Yeah, go for it. Beautiful. All right. This is a really cool recipe, too, because you're going to sneak in some vegetables that the kids may or may not <laughs> like. But once you bake this and add the ketchup, or even a vegetable gravy would be really good on top of this. Yum. Served on, si on the side with some mashed cauliflower. Yeah. You and got it. Always um, great. This doesn't just have to be for kids with PKU. This can be a dinner for the whole family, or if your kids are having friends over, it can be dinner or lunch for anyone. Yep, so. absolutely. This now is going to go into an oven that we've preheated at 350, and through the magic of, you can wash the your hands. Of, uh, yay. I'm going to pull out the finished recipe here, and this is what it's going to look like when we're done. So this is cooked, and at this point, you could uh, cover it with uh, ketchup and give it a coating and put it back in the oven to give it a little crustier top. But um, most of the time, I will serve it like this and then add the ketchup as, as we serve it. Do you want to try it? Oh, yeah, definitely, okay. for sure. It looks delicious. Now, remember, this is cut into yeah. eight servings. Yeah. So they're gonna be a there will serving. be a variation, and I think you want to... Yeah, so again, going back to what the um, gold standard for any PKU recipe is, you definitely want to know the gram amount to get the most specific uh, protein and pea content. So this, the way this recipe is calculated using these ingredients um, is that it'll yield eight servings, which is um, about 80 grams if you weighed it out, and each serving is gonna be about two grams of protein uh, or 80 milligrams of feet. Excellent. So All right. Grab a fork, fork over there. And let's give it a shot. It's smelling really good in here. Oh, it. Charles, are you going to join you us? We covered well, both now that the food is done, I yeah. think it's probably my turn to That's return to the kitchen. Very convenient, I Charles. Love it. Very convenient. I did want to just give a reminder that for all of the things that are cooked here in the PKU test kitchen, let's be sure that we always talk to our clinic team, our dietitians, before any change is made to our diet. And if you don't have a clinic team, if you haven't been to clinic in a while, good. there's a good. clinic finder really available on pku.com. There's also one right here on our pku.com <laughs> Facebook page. I'm excited to try this. Love it. So how long would this be in the oven? So that would be in the oven for about 30 minutes. And then um, because, you know, you've already cooked the cauliflower portion mm -hmm. of the ground beef, so that extra 30 minutes is just to combine and cook up and solidify the actual meatloaf itself. Mm -hmm. mm, so th our, our first great? recipe was about 15 minutes, yep. and then start to end for our second recipe, about how much time would it um, be? For the ground beef, you're looking at about 45 minutes, because okay. it has to go in the oven for 30. Okay. And then for the meatloaf, probably another 30 minutes. Okay. So okay. I know our PKUers and friends at home are probably thinking, wow, there was a lot of information covered so fast. <laughs> this recipe and many, many others are available on pku.com. Please keep the questions coming in. If we don't have a chance to get to them now, we certainly can get back to you later. Chef Jeff, 
10 years you've been perfecting these recipes. It's yeah. pretty cool that Thank you were you. here to share with Thank us today. Thank you very much. Yeah, I learned so much, it's, and it was delicious. <laughs> so thank you again for joining us. We will be hosting another Facebook Live event probably next month, and there are two others that are in the hopper. We encourage you to check out and learn more about how keeping your blood <laughs> C levels low can protect your brain. Uh, we actually have two of those, and as a reminder, we want to keep those, those levels between 2 and 6, 120 to 360, depending on which nomenclature your clinic uses. But we really appreciate you tuning in today. And thanks again. Thanks, guys. Thanks. From the PKU Test Kitchen. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye. Bye.